Welcome to Scratch Coding. With Scratch, you can create your own stories, puzzles, games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything in the programs that you write. Today, we're going to create something like this. It's a breakout game. You move the paddle and break all the bricks away. Breakout's been around since the 1970s, but it's still fun. My favorite part about playing this game is whenever I can get the ball past the top row and it just bounces around and gets all the bricks for me. And this is what it would look like if you miss. So let's start at the beginning and create a new project. Get rid of Scratch Cat, and we need some bricks, and this button will work just fine. Let's look at the costumes for this button. We have just blue and gray. I could just fill the whole thing in one color, but I kind of like the shading, so I'll do the, the left color a lighter red and the right color a darker red. And I'll duplicate that to make another color and rename the button to button one. The next one I'll do orange. Just click on the outside. Get the select tool and click on the outside. Change the left color to a lighter orange and the right color to a darker orange and then click on the middle part and do the same thing. A lighter orange on the left and a darker orange on the right. And then duplicate that one so that we can make a yellow one. And pick a light and dark yellow and do the same thing on the inside. And I'll jump off a minute to make some more buttons. I still have the blue, but I added a green and a purple brick. Now let's see what code we need. If we wanted our game to only have about six bricks across, then we could leave him this size, but I want it to have more. So I'll make it about 30%. Let's see how big that is. That's a good size to give us a bunch of bricks. And I want him to start off as the first brick. That'll be a red one. And I want him to go to where he's at right now. And the go to block is going to be the position, the X, Y position of your brick right then. And what I want him to do is to just keep drawing copies of himself all the way across. And I'm not sure how many that's going to be just yet. Let's repeat 10 times and create a clone of himself and then he'll just move over. So he'll create a clone of himself, move over by 10, create a clone of himself, move over by 10, create a clone of himself. Repeat that 10 times. Okay, those are too close. Let's change our X by 30. We're going to have to stop it to get rid of the first ones. And we need more of them. How about 16? We need to make that original guy not be visible because we want to just see the clones. So the original sprite is hidden. But if he starts off as a clone, we want him to be visible. So we add a show for him, and then we start the other code when the green flag is clicked. I'm going to adjust the numbers a little to make them fit better. That's good spacing. So we've got 16 going across, and then we want it to go to the next row and do 16 more across that's a different color. 
And remember, we have six different colors. So we need this one to repeat six times. Inside this repeat six times, first it's going to draw the first row. Then it's going to go to the next costume, which will just get a different color brick. We want it to move down on the y-axis. It's going to be a negative, but how much? Change y by, let's just say, negative 10. And our x to start off with was a negative 225, so we need to go back to there too. So it drew them all, but we just need to go negative y more. We'll try 20, negative 20. Let's try negative 18. I like that spacing. All right, wait, hold, stop everything. This is what the program looks like after it's already done. But I wanted to add this in here because I just figured something out. Right here where it says next costume and we spent all that time working on all these costumes. We didn't even have to do that. It takes a while to figure out what all these bricks do, what all this code does. But you don't have to do next costume and change to the next color. There's change color effect that would do the same thing. I got a couple of rows of green here, so let me change color effect by 30 instead of 25. And it's going to draw all those things for me. I didn't have to do that. So this is what the program's going to look like when it's completely done. But I wanted to jump in here and show you this before you wasted a lot of time drawing all the different colors because you don't really have to. I don't like the white background. We could draw a rectangle and color it in. Or we could just convert to a bitmap and color it in that way. Okay, now let's get a ball. Yellow ball's fine. When the flag's clicked, I want him to go, I think, 30% of work. I want him to go to the middle. and forever move and bounce. Let's make him start off pointing just a little to the right so his life will be a little bit more interesting. We need a paddle, but I can't really pick a sprite that we already have. Let's draw one. So we'll draw a rectangle. I want kind of a greenish. And then I want three different little rectangles. So I'll copy and paste. So I have three areas here. And I want them to be slightly different colors. The reason I want him to have three different colors is because when he bounces in the middle, I want it to make the ball go straight back up. And if he bounces on each side, I want it to go at an angle so that we'll have a little bit of control when we hit the ball. That'll be more like the original game. And if I group them together, I can make sure they're in the center. We'll drag him down here to where he goes. And then my go-to block will show the right place. When the game starts, he's going to go to the middle. I need a set size block. If you want your game to be harder, make your paddle smaller. And what we want him to do, you could use your arrow keys, but what I'm going to do is set the X value, that's how far left or right it is, set that to the mouse value. So then it just follows my mouse. I like that better than the arrows for this game. Let's go back to the code for the ball. Sure, it bounces when it hits the edge, but we want it to bounce when it hits the paddle or when it hits a brick. 
So we need some ifs. If it's touching something, what's my bricks called? Let's just call button. Let's call that bricks. So now our sprite for the bricks is actually called bricks. And if our ball is touching bricks, then let's make him change directions. We'll make him point in a different direction. It'll be direction plus 170. So he'll almost completely change direction because if we did it plus 180, it would go in the complete opposite direction. I need another if. If he's touching the middle of my paddle, I want him to bounce straight up. Point in direction. It's going to be zero degrees. Right click and duplicate that if. If he's touching, I'm going to suck up some of that left color. If he's touching the left of the paddle, then we'll make him go back that way. And if he's touching the right of the paddle, we'll make him go a little bit bounce to the right at 45 degrees. That has to be in that forever loop. That's looking pretty good, but we still need more code. So what happens when I miss? Nothing. Let's change the background to have a different color down here. Because then we'll be able to sense if the ball missed the paddle and hit that color. We'll go to a gray color. We'll just draw a rectangle. Let's get it way down so you can barely see it. Go back to the code for the ball. And have another condition. Ball, if you're touching that gray color, I gotta pick the gray color. then broadcast. Game over. And then stop this forever loop. Alright, it worked. It stopped the game. We could add the code so we could have three lives, but let's just leave it at one for now. Let's go back to the code for the bricks. I need a forever loop for the bricks that it just keeps checking to see if it's touching the ball. Because when it gets hit by the ball, it needs to disappear. We need an if inside the forever loop. So forever, if you're touching the ball, then hide and delete yourself. It works. They're disappearing. I wish I could get it to go above the top row and just start bouncing around. Oh, and I love it when that happens. They just start bouncing around and I just keep racking up the points. Speaking of points, we don't have any points. Let's get a score. We're going to make a variable and call it score. When the game first starts, score is zero. And every time we break a brick, we want to add one to the score. I need to add another if statement here. If the score is ever so much that it means he broke all the bricks, then we need to say that he won. He won the game. You could go on to a new level or something, but I'm just going to say that he won the game if he clears the screen one time. I need to add the code if score is greater than a certain amount. 
So if we've got 16 across and we've got six rows, that's 96. So we're going to have 96 bricks. So if the score is greater than 95, that means he won. I need to broadcast that he won. I'll just say win message. If I leave it like this, there's going to be a brick left at the end. I want him to hide before we say he won, or that last brick will still be there. Instead of starting with the green flag, let's add a start button. And I'll just write the word start on a button that they already have. Next we're going to need a sprite to show whenever they win the game and another sprite to show whenever they lose the game. So I'll create some text and say game over. I want to make that red and then put some yellow highlight on it. That looks good. I need to right click that sprite and make a copy, duplicate it. And make that say winner. So the winner sprite, the code for that, when the green flag is clicked, he'll hide. But when he receives the message, win message, then he'll show. The game over message is just the opposite. I'm going to drag the code over from, from the winning message. So when the green flag is clicked, he's going to hide. But whenever he receives the message that the game's over, then he'll show. So the game over message works. We got to get the start button working. So this ball doesn't need to move until we click start. When the green flag is clicked, the start button needs to show. And when the start button is clicked, he needs to broadcast the message Start Pressed. And then he needs to hide and just get out of the way. Now we've got to tell the ball to wait for the Start Press. So this whole forever loop needs to be when the start's pressed. When space, no. When I receive, start pressed. That's it. And whenever the game is won, when he receives the message, win message, the ball needs to stop bouncing around. So stop all the other scripts in this sprite. So the ball's just waiting on us now. What do you think of the speed? And hitting the middle of the paddle makes it go straight up. That's good. If I hit the left, it goes left. It's perfect. We could add some code to where at the beginning of the game you could say how hard you want the game to be and make the paddle bigger or smaller. Or make the ball go faster or slower, depending on how hard the player wanted the game to be. Let's give it a sound for when the ball hits the brick. It's going to be in here whenever it's touching the ball and the brick disappears. Let's make it make a sound. If we go to our sounds, that's all we have. We have to add a new sound. I'm going to grab this boop bing thing. I 
going to grab just one of these sounds. Then once I have what I want, I just copy it to a new sound, and that's the sound that I want. And I'll rename that sound just Bop. Let's see what it sounds like if we do that every time we hit a brick. What we need is to play the sound bop in that if loop if it's touching the ball. But we need to hide it before we play the sound. Sometimes it's hard to get these blocks exactly where you want them. All right, I got my sound turned on. I wanted you to be able to hear that sound that I added. It really adds to the game. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see anything else added to this game. Or if you've done a breakout game. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of the other games that I do. And it'll make it easier for people to find them. This free coding lesson was provided by Stim and Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.